preliminary round game, Finland against Team Sweden. And we're ready to introduce the starting lineups down at center ice. In goal number one, Peter Lindmark. the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association to the Calgary 1988 Olympic Winter Games. Representing the grassroots of hockey is Sean Tobin of the North Sydney Minor Hockey League. <laughs> Representing the Canadian National Freestyle Ski Team is Anna Fraser, who will represent Canada in the 1988 Winter Olympics. Anna goes into the 1987 88 season as the number one Canadian national women's aerials and combined champion and as the number two women's combined skier on the Grand Prix World Cup circuit. The winner of the women's aerial event at the 1987 Freestyle Olympic Preview Competition, she hopes to repeat her performance at the Olympic Winter Games in Calgary next February. Representing Canadian Tire is dealer Mr. Ian McKenzie. <laughs> Representing the sponsor of the Labatt Canada Cup is Mr. Dave Bryson, Maritime Promotions Manager of Labatt Breweries. <laughs> Will the captains please come to Center X? Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the National Anthems of Sweden and Finland by Johnny O'Coyne.
the Labatt, Canada Cup. There you go. <coughs> Welcome back to Center 200 in Sydney, Nova Scotia. A capacity crowd in excess of 5,000 on hand, and the officials for this hockey game in the middle is the referee, Paul Stewart from the United States, Ron Finn of Canada, of course, an NHL veteran linesman, and Mikhail Gelinovsky of the USSR will be the linesman for this game. Gary Green looking forward to a good one. Finns uh, have been a disappointment, frankly. An awful lot of individual talent on this team, but when they try to put it all together, something is missing. Well, a lot is going to rest on the shoulders of Kerry Taco today. He is an excellent goaltender. He has got North American experience, so today will be a big test for him. And the lineup's brought to you by Dodge Trucks, and there is the lineup that Taco will be facing. The lineup of the Team Sweden, of course. A couple of changes. Well, certainly Asatikinen can start a war out there. Ray Rutsalainen is not playing. He has gone back to Finland because his wife has given birth to a new baby boy. Okay, we'll get underway here from the opening face-off. The puck dumped quickly down the ice, and we will have an icing call right away against the Swedes. In the opening seconds of play from center 200 in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Beautiful Sunday outside here in the Cape Breton part of the country. But inside, the action is decidedly wintry. A little warm in the building, and it may get a little hotter. And Michael Galanowski of the Soviet Union. So the face-off now to the left of Peter Lindmark in the Swedish nets. The Swedes in the dark blue uniforms with the white and gold trim. And the Finns in a predominantly white color with the blue pants and the dark blue trim. Anders Eldebrink. Kuri moves up to make the check. They tried to hit Rupe with the long pass, and instead Hanu Verta got back there, and then for the second time in a minute, we have an icing call against Sweden. When we talked about Rutsalainen for Finland leaving their defense, that kind of leaves them a little bit short out there. However, a couple of their best defensemen have been Hanu Verta and Tima Utila. And the lineup's brought to you by Dodge Trucks. Peter Lindmark, the Swedish goalkeeper, has played in all of the games that Sweden has played in this tournament, has been very steady, and has not really had an easy game in the entire uh, lineup. Peter Anderson, their big defenseman, is not playing today in favor of Tommy Samuelson. We'll talk more about that later. Lars Carlson around to Eldebrink. Curry checking him. Eldebrink shovels it over center. And finally, they get it into the finish zone without incurring an icing. The Finns. Buzzing around, Curry now breaks out into the center ice area, drops it now for Strico across the line, looking for Beer, and there's a good shot. Nice pass there by Strico to set it up. And the Finns just missed it, getting a direct shot on goal. Here's a long shot by Sears from the point, a scramble in front of Lindmark. Eldebrink tries to control, the puck goes instead to Rutu. He just threw it into the slot area in front of the net, and Eldebrink was right there, but could not get it out. Now the Finns closing in and trying to make a shot once again. Lindmark made the save, and the Finnish player took the net right off the moorings. And that is all on the play. Peter Skrinko ended up taking the goal right off of its hinges, but the Finns are applying some pressure here on some sloppy defensive efforts here by Team Sweden. If the Swedes are going to win in this very important game to them, they must control the play out there. Their game is superb passing, skating, puck possession. So far, they've been a little sloppy in all those areas. Yarby, Hagman, and Tikkanen up front now for Team Finland. Utila. And... Looks like Gronstand on the blue line for the Finns. And Sweden going with Carlson. 
Utila now keeps it in at the line, shovels it in behind the net, Lindmark, and there's Kent Nielsen, and he was the player I was looking for because he was shaken up in a previous start, and they weren't sure until after the warm-up whether or not he would play, but Kent Nielsen is in the lineup for Team Sweden. He's wearing number 15. Carlson works his way out towards center, tried to set it up for Nielsen, and the puck is cleared down to Kerry Taco. Sundstrom now in the corner, shovels it behind the net. Nielsen throws it in front. There's a chance right on. Taco had to be very sharp on that close-in play by Carlson. Utila flips the puck into the Swedish zone. Thomas Janssen is there, around on the boards for Carlson. He leaves it for Nielsen. Two minutes gone in the first period. No score in the hockey game. The Finns have had two good chances. The Swedes just had their first shot on goal of the hockey game. Janssen works his way across the line. Got away from the checker, Miko Makala, and across the line, and it's offside at the blue line. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. Nielsen, as Peter had mentioned, he was questionable about playing today. Apparently, he was injured early in Friday night's game. Nielsen is in the lineup, though, but possibly with a bad leg. Taco in the corner, cleared it to the line. Michael Telvin keeps it in, takes a shot that somebody deflected, and that nearly went in the top corner behind Taco. Now the Finns shovel it towards the line. Club pass, not called, two on one break. Here's the Finns coming right for the net. And a good a defensive play there by Tommy Samuelson. It comes back out to the line. Quick shot. Lindmark kicked that out smartly. A, a penalty coming up. And it'll be to Tommy Samuelson of Team Sweden. Well, Samuelson, who had broken up a great two-on-one play, Ends up then taking a penalty, and you can see right in front of Peter Lindmark. The referee to the right of your screen, his hand was up. And Tommy Samuelson, who's not a very big guy, 5'9", 171. We told you earlier that he was inserted into the lineup in place of great big Peter Anderson. Anderson, who has played so well for this team. Team's penalty to number seven, Tommy Samuelson. Has Two not for holding well as a play as a result, Anderson finds himself Samuelson not dressed for today's game. 45. Utila keeps it in at the line. Now the Finns control behind their own net. It comes back out to Utila at the point. To Christian Rutu, Buffalo Saber, forward. Rutu and Utila are the only players to touch the puck so far. There's a blast by Rutu and a good save by Peter Lindmark. Now it comes back out to the line. Utila will try his lock right on. Lindmark kicked that into the corner. And quickly, Albelin gets it as far as the line, and they roll it. It came out across the line. Good call there by the official. And a little bit of uh, stick work. You notice how patient the Swedes were when they were killing off the first part of that penalty. They'll have a little bit more difficulty when this man, Yuri Curry, comes out on the ice as he is now. But the Swedes were staying in that very tight box. They were not going out and chasing the puck carrier. They were just making sure, as they've done throughout this tournament, that no one was able to enter that slot and get a good shot on Lindemark. Gustafsson out there now with Mats Naslin to kill off the penalty for the Swedes to pump it down into the finish zone. Siren and uh, Virtula, or Utila rather, are on the uh, defense on this power play. And up front, it's Skriko, Rutu, and Yari Kuri. And the puck has cleared the length of the ice. The Finns will be called for offside. We we're talking about the Swedish penalty killing system. And you can recall in the very first game, the Swedes versus the Soviets last Saturday night in Calgary, the Swedes did an exceptional job 
And Tommy Sandlin, the coach of this team, has designed this penalty killing system that he feels will be effective. They've got no reason to feel it will not be. It was successful during the World Championships in Vienna last year, which earned them the championship. Deacon and Hagman and Yarvey out there on the forward line now for Team Finland. A minute to go in the penalty to the Swedish player, Samuelson. And the Finns work their way into the center ice area. Deacon and takes a big hit, pumps it in on the boards. Good check there by uh, Carlson. And the Swedes clear it back down the ice. Thirty-eight seconds left in the penalty. That pass broken up smartly at the line by Carlson. Dropped it to Naslin. Here's a centering pass right in front, and Tikkanen did a good job to follow Gustafsson right back into the zone. Naslin nearly got loose, and the Swede buzzing around alertly. And the puck is on the mesh, and there's no further play. Well, Ronald Murphy's team, you can see the coach of the Finnish team, has really got no pressure on them, Peter. The, yesterday in practice, they were as loose as a goose, and for good reason. They know that their chances of going any further in this tournament are all over. However, they can act as the big spoilers today. That's what the Swedes are going to have to do more effectively throughout this game. They can play aggressively. We saw that against the Soviets. However, against this Finnish team, who are more aggressive than the Swedes normally, they are going to have to play the body out there. A small break in the action while Ron Finn does some repair work in the crease of Kerry uh, Taco. And now we're set to resume play. 15.35 to go in the first period from center 200 in Sydney, Nova Scotia. And there is no score in the hockey game. Siren. Makala now sets it up for Gronstadt. Delayed offside at the line. Janssen takes it back in behind his own net. Eldebrink clears it out and down the ice, and there's three seconds left in the penalty, so good penalty killing there by the Swedes, who actually had the better of the scoring chances in the last two minutes. Eldebrink now. Long pass across here to the Rundquist. And just as quickly, the uh, Finns start back. This is Makala working his way in across the line. Good physical play there, and Talvin clears the puck around on the boards, gets it as far as the line, and the Finns will regroup at center. Utila. Across the line, Suman it can't get loose, chops it in behind the net as the Finns make a quick change. And now Elderbrink. Up to Carlson. Anders Carlson, good shot, and right on, and Taco had to be very quick with the glove hand. Long pass up into the center ice area. Bergquist broke that up. Here is a nice pass at the line. And Carlson gets a couple of good scoring opportunities here. Taco makes two glove saves. That's the first one. Shortly after that, Carlson coming in across the blue line. Watch him. A good little drop pass here. He winds up. He's in good scoring position with a screen initially set up. Taco does the splits, catches that puck, pulls it right out of midair with that glove. Both plays set up beautifully by Hawkins Sodergren, number 22. Now there's a shot from a the slot area, and the Finns are lucky to get it out into the center ice area. Michael Anderson takes the return pass, missed it, and finally it's chopped out to center by Tommy Eklund of Team Sweden. Blomquist now shoots it right back in again. Janssen looking to make a pass, is checked instead, and gets it over to teammate Lars Carlson. Janssen. 
Up into the center ice area. Pedersen shoots it in across the line. Anderson was tied up, couldn't get to it. And now Timo Blomquist will start the Finns back out of their own zone. It's cleared down the ice by Rutu. It goes across the line, and that'll be an icing call as it was shot from the finish side of center. We'll take a break. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. filled almost to its 5,000 seat capacity for this game between Finland and Sweden on a beautiful Sunday in Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. Delighted you could join us. I'm Peter Watts with Gary Green and Howie Meeker and Kerry Tackle makes yet another glove save and clears the puck out into the center ice area. Tackle has been very steady here with some difficult chances in the opening six minutes of play and we get another whistle. Off back inside the uh, finish zone. Well, that is the Finnish mascot. I thought that was hasn't Jim done. Van Horn for a minute. <laughs> this mascot Jim's hasn't here done as well with us. Heck of a lot of good during this Canada Cup tournament. This line that is out there right now for the Swedish team, Naslin, Gustafsson, and Rupe, they have got to do it for Team Sweden today. They really have got to lead the offense for this club. Rupe, the least experienced player on that line. He is a Philadelphia Flyer draft choice and will be in their training camp shortly after Canada Cup. Christian Rutu is in the penalty box for roughing, and so now it'll be Team Finland with the, uh, or Team Sweden rather, with the power play. Eldebrink starts things back now for the Swedes, works his way to the line. Falls over a hockey stick. Now the Finns, or the Swedes move in quickly. Gustafsson throws it back out to Eldebrink at the line. He has to get rid of it into the corner. Magnus Rupe leaves it for Naslin. It comes back out to the line, kept in there. There's a shot right on, and good traffic in front of Taco. He had to be very sharp there with Rupe standing right in the crease. Here's Rupe once again, trying to work his way in front to Naslin. Back to the line. Here's another shot. Just missed the open net. And the Finns finally control, and Curry shoots it down the ice. You can see what the Swedes were trying to do there. Very much like a North American power play. Rupe was trying to get in front of Taco, caused some problems. Gustafsson in the slot, trying to set up a deflection, and they were shooting from the point. Nielsen works his way in across the Finnish blue line. Shoots it around behind the net. Naslin still out there on a long shift. Centered it right in front for Nielsen. And the Swedes have to come back out to center. Carlson. Johnson now. Up to Kent Nielsen. Nielsen on a bad leg is skating pretty well. Nielsen takes the pass. Big shot. Oh, that just about took Kerry Taco's head off. And the Swedes are lucky to keep it in at the line. Now the Finns break quickly to center. Still killing this penalty. Good defensive play there by Runquist at the line. And Tomas Runquist. Comes back for the Swedes. Works his way in across the line. Gronstan held him up. Nielsen went to get the loose puck. And the Finns control once again. Five seconds left in the penalty. Makala works his way in across the line. Or Suman and make that. And it's cleared around. And the Finns have killed the penalty effectively. Carlson and Janssen behind the net. And this is Lars Carlson. To Janssen. Tomas Janssen works his way in across the line. Poke check by Makala, and the puck comes back out to center. 10.50 to play in the first period. Still no score in the hockey game. The Swedes have had the better of the chances to this point. Taco. Clears it around. Blumquist missed it. There's a shot by Anders Carlson that went wide. Carlson has had two outstanding scoring chances in this first period. Blumquist shoots it into the zone. It's left behind the net by Samuelson. 
Now Michael Talvin, a Boston Bruin defenseman, shoots it out to center. Carlson tried to find the open man Sodergren and couldn't. And now Bloomquist controls. Zooming in. An awful lot of neutral ice play out there right now. Neither team gaining that blue line. Talman and shoots it into the zone and just as quickly Talvin breaks that up and sets it up for Samuelson. To Anders Carlson. There's a shot toward the side of the net. We'll have an interference call coming up against the Finns. Another shot, Taco came out, kicked that into the corner. And now we get the whistle. We'll take a break. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. He didn't get it, but he did draw a penalty into the marks again. So the Swedes on the power play for the third time in the period. Anderson won the draw. Eldebrink with a shot. Anderson ready and fires. And Taco made another big save. Harry Taco has been the story of a sluggish first period here so far. And now the net is off its moorings and we get another whistle. Lars Gunnar Pedersen, who had been inserted in the lineup, he did not play against the Soviets. A lot of the reason? Well, he's a great goal scorer, but not great at back checking. He's had a couple of good chances as of the last few minutes. Watch right there. Pedersen just ends up picking up that puck and blasting it. Taco gets over there right at the last second, but Lars Gunnar Pedersen is an offensive style player for the Swedish team, and after game one, he was inserted into the lineup. So the face-off to the left of Kerry Taco. A minute and 48 seconds left in the finish penalty to Newmanen. And the puck comes out to Telvin at the line. Thomas Janssen, right on Well, a man with lots of experience back in the blue line, experience in North American play, Thomas Johnson, the New York Islander defenseman, ends up with possession of the puck after that faceoff. The Swedes won it clearly back to the point. Now watch, as it crosses over to Johnson, he walks in, you can see it. Taco was beaten, he could see it all the way there. Thomas Johnson with the first goal of the hockey game. So a game that Sweden has to win to make it into the middle round and the Swedes get on the scoreboard first on a goal on the power play by Thomas Janssen. Michael Talvin will get one assist and that came at 10.38 and now the Swedes are buzzing in again and Taco stands up and makes the good save right at, on a good close in shot from the slot. Now the Finns try and get out once more. Hagman or Rutu make it. Rutu. And the puck comes back outside the line as Utila could not keep it in. Ron Stan and Utila on the blue line for Team Finland. Curry missed the uh, shot. Rupe sets it up in the slot. Gustafsson and Naslund was hauled down. And the puck comes out into the center ice area to Rupe to Eldebrink. Naslin to Janssen. And we get it offside at the line. That goal by Thomas Janssen, assisted by Telvin and Anderson. Janssen seeing the ice out there. He's made a couple of good rushes in the neutral ice area, gaining the blue line. He's a heads-up defenseman out there that can see the whole ice surface. That's what's made him valuable for the New York Islanders. 
the Finns try once more to break out into the center ice area. They get as far as the line, and Bloomquist has to regroup in the center ice area. Now he shoots it in behind Peter Lindmark, who had a couple of shots, uh, saves to make early in the first period, but hasn't been too busy the last five minutes or so. Runquist gets in as far as the line. Samuelson shovels it towards the corner. Nielsen taken in on the boards by Newmanen. Bloomquist clears it around on the boards. Bloomquist to Hagman, to Tikkanen. Essa Tikkanen, the Edmonton Oiler, left winger. Shoots it into the Swedish zone. Now it's Runquist out into the center ice area. Sundstrom can't control, Runquist carries on. Nielsen takes the pass into the slot area. Here's Janssen once again. He was hauled down by Yarby. Anu Verta around on the boards and Tikkanen will try his luck once again. Can't get it out. Now finally does. Finns changing with the play right in front of their own bench. And the Swedes, Michael Talvin, able to control it along the boards. Then he gives it away. Makala moves up behind the net. Makala in the corner. Gets some help finally from Telmanen. And now we're going to get a penalty call against Michael Talvin for holding. 6.41 to go in the first period. This is the Labat Canada Cup. with a holding penalty. Watch as he has got the butt end of his stick there just underneath of Makala's arm. Now Makala, I think, at that point in time decided that was good enough to go down for and it may just draw a penalty that it did. Makala moves into the slot area, shoots it over top of her, off a hockey stick actually, it wound up in the corner. And here comes the Swedes out of their own zone once again. Verna broke that up in the neutral ice area. And now Siren starts back for Finland. And the puck goes off a stick and over the glass behind Peter Lindmar. Peter, we've really had a pretty lifeless game here so far. One would have expected the Swedes to come out with a real intense effort out there, taking the body, moving the puck as they're capable of. Neither team has looked as though they have wanted to win this hockey game too badly. For the Finns, we understand that there's not a great deal of reason for them to play well other than to be the spoilers and to go home at least acknowledging the fact they beat the Swedes. However, for the Swedes, it's life or death today. Skrinko cleared it around on the boards. Kent Nielsen got after it there. Utila kept it in at the line. Skrinko behind the net. Works against Janssen. Now it comes around on the boards to Rutu. He throws it across, good pass to the point. Gronstad to Utila, back to Rutu. 5.45 to go in the first period. Right in front, what a save Lindmark made. Best stop of the period on Gronstad. Brilliant goalkeeping by Lindmark. Nielsen now shoots it into the finish zone. Down to 50 seconds left in the penalty. Thomas Janssen let Gronstrand walk right in there, totally undefended. Skrinko moved up trying to take the pass. Naslin cleared it out and down the ice, and Tommy Eklund, instead of going for the long skate, went to the bench for a rest instead. Utila now back up through the center ice area. Skrinko across the line, sets it up for Christian Rutu. Some heavy work along the boards there. The official nearly got hit with a high stick, and now Elderbrink works his way across the finish line. Naslin is in the deep slot looking for a pass. The break instead just clears it back over the boards and out of play. Well, Eldebrink there looked as though he was Hercules carrying that puck. Meanwhile, Yari Grandstrand, the defenseman for the Finnish team, did nothing to stop him. 
Naslin, if he ever starts using his speed out there in today's game, will walk right around those Finnish defensemen pretty easily. The Finns not being very aggressive and certainly not taking the body. So the face-off to the right of Kerry Taco. We have a minute, or we have 12 seconds left in the penalty. And there is 4.53 to go in period one. It is 1-0 in favor of Sweden on a goal by Thomas Janssen. Carlson with the big shot from the point is away wide. Tikkanen clears it back into the corner. Verta sets it up for Tikkanen. And finally it is Siren back to Vertela. Telvin out of the bottom, cleared it to the line. Carlson broke up that finish for eight. Tikkanen just waited for the puck to come to him, and unfortunately for him, Sundstrom went and got it first. Nielsen with a nice move to get it in along the boards. And Sundstrom nearly got a chance for a shot, and now the Finns start back. Hagman, long pass across ice. That's thrown into the corner. Talvin is after it there. Runquist now. Throws it up into the center ice area. Nielsen just dropped it off. Sundstrom. Up for Nielsen. And it slides down the ice and we will get another icing this time against Sweden. 3.48 to go in period one. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. Center 200, Sydney, Nova Scotia, Sweden against Finland. Preliminary round action of the Canada Cup. 87, 3.48 to go in the first period. 1-0 in favor of the Swedes. And Anders Eldebrink of Team Sweden controls the puck in his own zone. Sodergren threw it up through the center ice area. Runquist tipped it into the zone. And the Finns are clearing it right back out again. And down the ice. And that will be an icing call against Finland. Interesting, the Swedish team were saying before the game that they were hoping to be able to get ahead by a couple of goals. If they did that, they felt they would take the firepower out of the Finns. Well, so far, the Swedish team is ahead by one goal, and it looks as though they're just playing well enough to stay ahead, and the Finns aren't doing a heck of a lot about it. No, I've been very surprised and, and a little disappointed. There's so many good individual talents on Team Finland, and yet, Something is missing when they try and put it all together, and I don't know what it is. Eldebrink tipped it towards the front of the net, and the Finns clear it out into the center ice area. Well, you know, it has been the NHL players on Team Finland that, that have been the biggest disappointment for this team. Sonnegren dumped it towards the net. Kept in at the line by Tommy Elbelin. Now it comes back out towards the line. Eldebrink kept it in. Sodergren threw it back into the slot. He's made some good passes into that area in this game, looking for teammates. Now Seppo across the line, missed the net with a hard shot. And Anders Carlson starts this Swedish thrust out of his own zone. Plays a couple of games with Finnish players and promptly loses the puck at his own line. Gronstan takes over for Finland. Ronstan in across the line. Now here's a chance for Team Finland. There's a chance right across in front of the net for Yarvi. And Seppo now takes his man in on the boards, and here come the Swedes back. Sodergren works his way across the line, took a hit, gave the puck to Eklund, then went after the uh, loose puck in behind the net, and Gronstad got there first and cleared it out to Kilonen. Lars Carlson. 2.10 to go in the first period. 1-0 for the Swedes. Michael Anderson tips it into the zone. Tommy Eklund goes after it. Taco comes out and plays it around the glass. And it goes over the boards. This is the Labatt Canada Cup.
Two minutes and two seconds to play in the opening period. From center 200 in Sydney, Sweden one, Finland nothing. Again, the Swedes have to win the hockey game to move to the medal round. The Finns are out whether they win, lose, or tie in this game against Sweden. Yari Curry breaks the center. For Skriko. Skriko working behind the net. Now comes out the other side. Looking to make a pass into the slot and Rutu just failed to tip it in the open side. Pedersen, long pass to Tommy Eklund. Janssen tried to give it back to Eklund who was open on the left side, couldn't get to it and here's Curry for Finland. Drops it for Berta. Berta into the slot, took the shot and it was just a little bit wide. Eklund now for Sweden. Just gets rid of it into the finish zone. Curry. For Tikkanen. Set it up for Curry. Curry takes the shot. There's the chance way in front of the net. Rutu could not backhand it in the open side. And here's Mats Naslund for Sweden. One minute out into the center ice area. A minute to go in the opening period. And the puck is cleared over the glass once again. Yari Curry has really had a difficult time in Canada Cup. One goal, one assist. That's very unlike Yari Curry, who you would expect to fill the net with pucks during this Canada Cup. 54 goals, 54 assists. Last season, Curry has not been able to click with his line mates out there. You saw a couple of good opportunities. Rutu is at center ice with him, along with Skriko. The three of them have been very ineffective in Canada Cup. Fortunately, we had a spectator clipped by that puck that went over the glass. I don't think it's too serious, but uh, a little bit of medical attention will probably be in order. Very low glass here. It, uh, you really have to keep your eye on the play anywhere in the rink because the puck can come over the glass without too much difficulty at all. It's much lower than it is in NHL size arenas. Back to the live action as the Swedes clear it in behind Kerry Taco, Timo Blomquist. Works his way to the line, gets it out to center. Naslund backhands it right back in again. Ben Gustafson hustles in there. Bloomquist got there first. Gustafson made the good check. Rupe moves up to help. Rupe tries a shot that went over top of the crossbar. It's kept in at the line by Samuelson. This is the best aggressive work we've seen out of the uh, Swedes in about 10 minutes. Now Telvin gets to the line and keeps it in. Nice play there as Tikkanen went after him. Rupe takes his man in on the boards. Yarvi just left it. Bloomquist had to flip it out into the neutral ice area. And the first period is over. And the Swedes are leading the Finns by a score of one to nothing. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Because of the limited time between today's well, game and 7,200 management that was like a college race following. Ja, vi hade Paul Chanste och Mikael Andersson vann pekningen rätt bak till Mikael Telvén och han fick en perfekt passning av så fick ta in, boka in par skär och, och nypa till. Mellan benen på målvakten tycker jag. Ja, mellan benen. Och det, det, det är deras umtorra punkt så att det är skönt att se dem klänka in det. Det såg ju ganska bra ut tyckte jag från Åskåra plats i första perioden men ni började nervöst. Vi började Ja, började... ah, vi började väldigt dåligt. Vi visste nog inte hur finnarna skulle spela om de skulle komma in och få försöka eller om de skulle bara ta hem på kanterna. Så de första 3-4 minuterna var vi, vi visste inte helt enkelt hur de skulle spela och då var vi lite konfundersamma. Men sen tycker jag vi kom in mer och mer i matchen. Det var mycket spel i, mellan de två blå linjerna på mitten. Ja, ah, det är väl våran... Eh... Vår taktik så att säga. Vi försöker gröta hårt i mitt zon och försöka kontra på dem. Så att det blir mycket spel på, i mitt zon på det sättet. Det vill ni ha så? Ja, det vill du ha. Det är vår. Det vi var framgångsrika mot både ryssar och tjecker så att varför ska vi ändra? 1-0 vill ni ha och segern vill ni ha. Hur ska ni fortsätta för att behålla det här? Ja, vi måste hålla oss kalla och spela på samma sätt hela tiden. För vi får inte, bli lite, får inte ha någon panikkänsla utan vi spelar samma, samma stil hela tiden. Tack så mycket Thomas. Tack. Vi fortsätter med två perioder ytterligare i den här matchen mellan Sverige och Finland i Kanada.
score of one to nothing here at uh, Complex 200 in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Jim Van Horn along with John D'Amico, NHL veteran linesman who's, uh, I guess, 24 years or a quarter of a century. It's, they both sound like a long time, John. You've had quite a career. Yeah, it has been. It's been a very interesting career. Uh, had the opportunity to work in the first Canada Cup in 1976, and uh, this will probably be my uh, last one here in uh, 87. This is your fourth. Uh, how have they been? Which, uh, which one's been the best for you so far? Well, the game that uh, stands out in my mind more than anything was the uh, final game in between Czechoslovakia and Canada in uh, 76 when they went in a couple of periods of overtime. And I'll tell you, physically and mentally, it was... Uh, to the health of my career. Well, to, to watch that game and to see the end of it, the way the players uh, almost simultaneously decided to trade sweaters was really a start of a trend that, that's continued since then. And the emotion that was shown by both sides throughout that game was very special. Well, that's true. You know, it's, it's a different type of emotion between players. Uh, people don't sense to realize that uh, the official on the ice, regardless of what country they're from, there's a lot of mental pressure, you know, on them physically and mentally. And, uh, that particular game, the uh, Swedish referee worked, and the other linesman was uh, Valimir Schubert, the, the Czechoslovakian referee here uh, in the Canada Cup Series. But, uh, you know, as an official, you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. You're caught right in the catch-22. John, when you look at the officiating, you talk about the pressure. Ron Finn is working with a Soviet linesman this afternoon. How much extra pressure is on, on each linesman not being able to communicate? Well, there, there is a lot. Uh, if you have a, an official from, uh, say, another country and he can speak English, there's uh, a little bit of a lot of communication. Uh, Michael, the uh, official from the Soviet Union, he can converse, but just very, very little. So Ronnie would probably have to maybe be honest, though, a little maybe stronger than he would like to be. But, I mean, he wants to be... Uh, have as much communication with him and the uh, referee, you know, the referees from the United States and he works in the National Hockey League, but uh, they want to do their very, very best out there. How do you turn off your personal feelings when you, when you get into a game like this, especially when you're a linesman in a Team Canada game, say, against the Soviets? You really don't think of it that way. It's a, it's a hockey game as I'm a very, you know, fortunate that way that I can turn everything off. Uh, you're in a position that you work in the National Hockey League and you got to do the same thing here. It, it involves with your country. You just have to be that much more aware of uh, what you do is going to say, oh, yeah, sure, he's going to be partisan. But uh, that, you, know, you have to work that much harder. Good luck in the game this afternoon. Thank you very much. John D'Amico will be the linesman in the uh, Team USA Czechoslovakia game later on this afternoon. And we'll take a break and come back with more from Sydney. This is Labatt Canada Cup 87. <laughs> Team Finland by a score of... One to nothing, just uh, the one goal in that first period by Thomas Johnson. Very happy to welcome back our old partner from last year. He's back for another spin around this year. Howie Meeker is here with uh, with some highlights. Howie in a first period that, that really, really wasn't all that inspirational for either team. Did pretty well. Don't touch anybody. Handle the puck super. Uh, play the game like, oh, well, if we uh, have a terrible period, uh, we'll come back the next period, and if we stink the joint out the next period, we might save it in the third. Nevertheless, many, many very interesting things, particularly the Swedes killing a penalty, something that I've never seen them do before. This way, that is. Okay, the Finns are on the power play right here, and there's the puck. And look at both Swede four-checkers are on the same side of the ice. Now, they're going to force the pass to go to this side, and they know it. And watch how this develops. It's just tremendously interesting. Okay, let it go. Let it go, Gary. That's it. Now, the pass has to go to the left side of the rink. Now, stop it right there. This defenseman here is very, very smart right there. He knows that there's absolutely no way at all that the puck can continue up this side because he's got two men coming at him right here. And watch this guy read the play and make the interception. Watch him move into position. Now there's the cross ice pass. Has to be in the air if it's going to get to the potential pass receiver, but no way at all. Now stop it right there. Stop it right. Once again now, he's smart in reading the play and intercepting the pass. But now what he's going to do, he knows he can't outfoot this checker right here, but he's going to create some open ice for the man in behind him. Watch, he'll hide the puck and drop the pass. Just a super, super play. Let it go. That's it. There, he's drawn it over to him. Now stop it right here. Now all of a sudden, this guy here who's been watching the great play going on there, he's caught dead to rights. The, the, third, the third player is coming this way, right up and through, and it's a two-on-one. 
And now watch the great play. All kinds of speed here. Great burst of speed. Look at him, wait for the checker, wait for the checker, flips the pass into the air, and he gets it, but it jumped over top of his stick. Just a tremendous scoring opportunity. First of all, great defensive play because the guy, fellas, they're not using their feet, they're not using their bodies, they're using their heads. Now, if they can put the three together, we'll have one hell of a hockey game. I'm not going to guarantee they're going to do that. But nevertheless, that was just a super defensive play and a great offensive play. Now we got another one for you. You still down there, Jim? Yeah, I am. I was going to ask you about the goaltending. I really thought that Kerry Taco held Team Finland in this game in the first period. The score could be a lot higher had it not been for his play. Ah, oh, what the heck's the sense of making two great saves when a shot from deep right center field goes between his legs? Now, come on. All the guy has to do is come out, attack the puck, keep his legs together, and hey, it's a 0-0 zero -zero hockey game. But it's not just his fault, though. I mean, he's not getting the backup from his players. The Swedes are being allowed to walk in and, and shoot at random, and they, they've, been, they've had some pretty good shots, some good chances, and he's made some big stops. Guarantee he's made some big stops, but as I said again, what's the sense of it? All you ask the goaltender to do at any level of hockey, whether it be whether it be Pee Wee or the National Hockey League, is make the saves you have to make. Don't beat yourself. Now, when the guy shoots it from the blue line and I come out and I open my legs and it goes, oops, where'd it go? Between my legs, that is terrible, terrible goaltending. And I don't care if he made eight impossible saves before that. I yank the turkey if I'm the boss. Well, I think still one out of eight isn't too bad. And Kerry Taco, I think, played a pretty good period of hockey. Nice to see you're in good form after the summer, Howard. We'll take a break and come back with more from Sydney and the Labatt's Canada Cup 87. And let's have a look at the scoring summary from the first period brought to you by Dodge Trucks. The only goal scored by Thomas Janssen on a power play at 10.38. And 10.6 the shots on goal. Sweden won, Finland nothing as we get ready to start period two. Well, Peter, I don't know whether Corpy and Sandlin gave their hockey clubs maybe some chocolate bars in between periods. Let's hope so because neither team showed a great deal of enthusiasm or life in period number one. We'll see whether the Swedes especially come out with some desire to win this game in period number two. Even a wake-up call would have been uh, in order. Well, maybe it's the afternoon oh, game and they, they can't get their clocks adjusted. But nevertheless, a pretty lifeless first period. All right, let's see what the Finns are able to muster here in the way of an attack as they will start Skriko, Hagman, and Yari Curry on the forward line. Verta and Grandstand on the blue line for the Finnish team. It'll be, it'll be Gustafsson along with Nasland and Rupe for Sweden. Albalan and Eldebrink on defense and Anders Eldebrink. Throws it up into the center ice area. Rupe chops it towards the corner. Verta fights him off. It comes instead to Gustafsson. Naslin can't get free, and it's shoveled around on the boards and comes out as far as the line. Skriko shoots it into the Swedish zone. Bad bounce off Lindmark. Came right in front. Nobody in position to take advantage. Naslin takes the hit, and now it'll be Albalin for Team Sweden. He just leaves it there. Gustafsson works it in across the line. Naslin couldn't take the pass. And now we'll get a delayed offside call, and we'll see. No, they'll bring it out safely. Skriko for Finland. Shoots it into the zone. The Finns make a change, so the Swedes aren't touched in going back to get that puck and starting back. Janssen got it as far as the line, and Gustafsson was offside. Well, Janssen was trying to carry that puck in. Gustafsson saw exactly what he was attempting to do. However, Gustafsson was right on the same railway tracks as Janssen was attempting to come down. Janssen, we mentioned earlier, has good vision out there. He can see the ice, but he's a guy back in the blue line right now, along with an Eldebrink, who've really got to get things going for the Swedes. Nielsen, Runquist, and Sundstrom out there now for Sweden. Sundstrom's got the puck in the corner. Nielsen. Works behind the net, tried to center it. Taco tipped it back in behind the finished goal. And now Tikkanen just lets it out into the center ice area. And Lars Carlson leaves it for Nielsen. 
Hagman up to do some forechecking. And the Finns break out, or the Swedes break out to center. Nielsen is checked along the boards, and the officials called it so that the Soviet linesman Mikhail Galinovsky wasn't deposited right in the Swedish bench. Well, as you look at the Swedish bench, I'd mentioned Anders Alderbrink, who was sitting to the right of your screen. Alderbrink probably been one of the better defensemen for Team Sweden. He's 26 years of age. He has the abilities to be good both end zones with the puck. He can carry it, and he can play pretty well defensively. Ramo Helmanen. Up to Newmanen. He shoots it into the zone. Samuelson cleared it around on the boards. Carlson dumped it out to center. Here's Hawkins Sodergren. Sodergren works behind the net. Nobody in position to take a pass. Sodergren has to do it all himself. Now Carlson shows up and deflected it wide. And the puck is steered around into the corner. Suminen checked by Michael Telvin. Newmanen now will try his luck out to Suminen. Boyanen. Makala. Across the line, Michael Anderson breaks that up. Anderson works towards the corner. Bloomquist took it away from him. Eklund draped in along the boards. The puck is cleared out to center. Seppo. Seppo works in towards the front of the net. And it's kept in at the line by Verta. Now Michael Anderson. That pass broken up in the center ice area by Siren. Eklund throws it over here on the side to Anderson. He steers it around behind the net. Eklund tried to dig it free. It comes back out in front. And Killinen got it out into the center ice area. Just over three minutes gone in the second period. Still 1-0 the score. Thomas Janssen's first period power play goal. The only scoring to this point in the hockey game. Oyanen takes a hit at the line. Gustafson cleared it over for Eldebrink. Held a break. Spilled as he crossed the line. The Finns control again. <coughs> Kilonen up towards the line. Chopped into the zone. Delayed offside. But Rupe controls for Sweden. Long pass up for Naslin. Takes it at the line. Took an elbow as he tried to duck underneath a check there and threw it back out to center. Janssen. That's broken up. Here is Siren in across the line. And the Swedes break that up and get it out to center. Utila is called on the offside. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. Just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, there are still some tickets available for the I'm, I'm still not hearing. I'm not hearing the truck, and I'm not hearing commercial cues. Yes, I could just hear someone, finally. Yes. Hello, yes. Just a reminder that we've been here for the first game of the minor. Just for a second. Coming back on a replay or what? Welcome back to Center 200 in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Peter Watts with Gary Green, Howie Meeker, and Jim Van Horn. 1-0 Sweden over Finland. Peter, in watch, the second period. Watch the Finns when they do get an offensive opportunity. As Howie had mentioned before the game, they tend to be more like a North American team. They'll get over that red and dump it in. However, they haven't shown much aggressiveness at going after it in the corners. And they haven't shown a lot of skill in setting anything up, even if they do go into the zone, which they have done on precious few occasions so far. The Finns give up the line again. The Swedes break out into the center ice area and clear it in behind Taco. Rupe can't keep it in along the line. Nasland up there as well. Backhand shot goes wide. Gustafsson lets it go to the line. And it's chopped out to center where Thomas Janssen has it. Carlson. Now Skriko will try his luck. He gets in across the zone. Has the puck taken away from him. Nasland just get rid of it down the ice. And we have another icing call. Almost five minutes gone in the second period here at center 200. 
good crowd on hand today for this game. This was the game originally planned for here. The U.S. Czech contest was moved to Sydney after sluggish ticket sales in Ottawa where it was originally intended to be played. And this game is a virtual sellout, but so far the fans have not had a whole lot to cheer about. Watch Esatikinen out there, the Edmonton Oilers player number 10. He hasn't been too visible out there in the game other than putting a bear hug on one of the Swedish players at one point in time. Tikkanen's a guy that at least is feisty. Now he should be the guy out there right now to get something going. Even if he runs the guy, do something to get this Finnish team going. I can imagine what Glenn Sather would be saying to him after he performed the first period and the first shift <laughs> in this second period uh, the way he has. He wouldn't be back on that ice any too long, I'll tell you. Tikkanen kicks it back out to the line. Newman's shot is away wide. Yarvey moves after it. Bloomquist keeps it in the zone. Hagman behind the net. Now it's Yarvey. Digging the puck out. Gets it back. Oh, tried to get it back to the line and just gave it away. And it comes out into the center ice area where Teppo Newman has it. Samuelson now to Michael Telvin. Telvin, long pass up into the center ice area. Runquist. Got in across the line, didn't have any help with him, and four Finns managed to converge on him. And the puck is cleared out into the Swedish zone. Talvin will try it again. Nielsen. Threw it into the corner. Michael Talvin moves up, tries to center it. Sundstrom was pushed away from the puck, and the Finns come back. Tikkanen just shot it as far as the line. The laid offside coming up, but the Swedes are able to get it out of the zone. Nielsen dropped it towards the line. The Finns are able to break that up. Makala checked by Sundstrom. And now here is Albalin moving up and clearing it into the zone. Sodergren goes after it. And now that pass is intercepted along the boards by Blumquist, or Bergquist, uh, Bergquist rather. Taco kicks the shot out into the corner. Nielsen threw it back towards the line. Sodergren. There's a shot by one of the Swedish players that Taco was able to kick out. Now here's another chance. Taco held his ground on the short side and the puck was into the corner. Bergvist was able to bang away at that puck right in front of Taco and not one Finnish defenseman even interrupted him. They just stood and watched him. On the basis of their play so far, neither one of these teams really deserve to be in the medal round, but uh, the Swedes could get there with a victory. Now Sumanen will try his luck. Sumanen out to Siren. Good pass up the ice. Makala breaks down the boards. Makala centered it, and Eklund poked it to the line, but not out. There's another chance that just slid wide by the open corner. Lindmark was after it. Gronstan's pass comes back out to the line. Now here's another chance, what a great save there by Lindmark. Suminen with the excellent scoring opportunity. The Finns starting to buzz around a little bit. Siren throws it across in front of the net. Gronstan with the big shot. Lindmark got a piece of that and steered it towards the corner. And now Carlson shovels it out to the line. It's in behind the net. Janssen backhands it out into the center ice area. Lars Pedersen shovels it in across the line. And Gronstan checked him. Now it's Ben Gustafson. Nice poke check there as Gustafson went sliding in to the back of the net. Gustafson gets up, tries to poke it in front. Siren has it one more time, and he just gets rid of it down the ice. Best sustained action in the hockey game to this point, but no goals. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. back with Howie. I don't know. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll take it. 11.41 to go here in the second period from center 200 in Sydney, Nova Scotia. 
Well, Sumanen had an excellent opportunity to tie this hockey game up. Watch it from Peter Lindmark's angle. You could see that all of a sudden he was left all alone in front of the net with number 25 for the Finns, Sumanen. And the Finns had an excellent scoring opportunity. You know, the Finns had given the Swedish team plenty of opportunity in this game to be way ahead. One goal is not a good enough lead for the Swedish team. Samuelsson retreats into his own zone to get the loose puck. 1-0 for Sweden. Thomas Janssen's first period goal on a power play. The only scoring so far. Naslin up to Gustafsson. Lost it at the line. Back out into the center ice area. Naslin shoots it right back in again. Taco leaves it in the corner for Newman. It. Gustafsson moved up to make the check. Kept in at the line by Samuelsson. Now Gustafsson goes to the boards. Rupe up there to help out as well. Rupe digs it free. Rupe, big Swedish left winger, going to the Philadelphia Flyer camp in another week or so when Canada Cup is over. Rupe tries to make the pass. Naslund was loose there, but a finished stick got in the way. Rupe tries his luck again, this time in the corner. Two players have him draped in along the boards. And finally, the Finns dig it free. Rutu dumps it down the ice. Eldebrink starts back for Sweden. Nielsen dumps it into the zone. Sundstrom took a bit of a dive, and the official did not call it. Tikkanen. It's his stick up in the corner working against Sundstrom, and the official got in involved in that one as well. And now Makalas gets it out into the center ice area. Tommy Albelin, long pass up to Kent Nielsen. Dropped it for Runquist, shot to the line, kept in by Albelin. And now it comes back out to Eldebrink in the center ice area. 9.45 to play in the second period. Runquist. And now the Swedes Give it away, the Finns able to keep it in. Here's a chance for McAuley in front, right on! What a save there by Peter Lindmark. Sundstrom after it in the corner. And it comes back out to the line. Now here's a chance for Siren. Long shot deflected by the defenseman Eldebrink. Cleared around on the boards, comes back out to Siren. Back into the corner. Hagman chopped it in front. And the Swedes are able to cover up and clear it out into the center ice area. And now we've got some stick work behind the play and some words, and we'll sort it out when we come back. 9-10 to go in the second period. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. <coughs> 10 for Finland, 9 for uh, Sweden. 10 for, 10 for Finland, 9 for Sweden. 10.50's the time. I think for roughing, but I didn't see that. Well, Finland has had the best scoring opportunities in this period. This time, it was number 15, Iro Yarvi, that gets a good opportunity. Lindmark has come up with some big saves. However, in front of Lindmark, the Swedish defense have not been very aggressive, and that is what has caused some good finish opportunity. Giveaways in their own end zone. Going to be costly to Sweden. Sodergren broke up that play and tipped it out into the center ice area. Gronstad now to Siren. He clears it back into the zone. Zoom in and moves up quickly. Peter Lindmark comes out and shoots the puck out to center. Sodergren, good defensive forward. I like number 22. He's a pretty good hockey player. Gronstad clears it around on the boards. I'm waiting for Howie to disagree with me, but he so far hasn't said anything. We'll see what happens, but they've used Sodergren a lot here in a checking role to kill penalties, and he's been pretty effective. Gronstad around to Helmanen. Utila now on the blue line. Those penalties were for roughing at uh, 9.50. Utila. The difference is, Peter, you know a little bit something about a forward. My buddy Jim knows absolutely nothing about goaltending. <laughs> 
The Labatt Player of the Game for Finland will receive a set of 10 Olympic coins, compliments of Canadian Tire, an official supplier to the Calgary 1988 Olympic Winter Games, and a few dreams along the way. Canadian Tire. Eight oh seven to go in the second period. Sweden won. Finland no score, but the Finns have had some good chances, and Peter Lindmark has had to be sharp on three or four occasions here in this second period. With Euro Yarby having a couple of good chances, and Ramo Suman and another. Suman is a player who Barry Fraser, the Edmonton Oilers chief scout, thought enough of to bring over for a look see a couple of years ago. He was traded to. Vancouver last fall and I think he has been a disappointment in the NHL. I don't think uh, he's really been the kind of player that everybody thought that he would be when he first came here. Samuelson now as we get back to the live action gets it as far as Telvin and now Skriko works his way through the center ice area. Corey gets a chance. Corey robbed again by Peter Lindbark. Brilliant save by Lindbark who sprawled and took the shot away from the Oilers sniper. Telvin in across the line. Here's a chance in the slot. Elder break right in. Oh, what a save. Taco made on the short side on Tommy Eklund. Now the Swede buzzing around. Anderson centering pass knocked back into the corner by Taco. Eklund moves in, and I think the four players along the boards will freeze it. Eklund, though, has other ideas, and finally we get a whistle. 7.05 to play in period two. This is the Labatt and the Cup. an opportunity as he walked right by the Swedish defense. He tries to get a shot away. He was a little hampered at doing so, but you could see Lindmark coming way out to make the save. Yari Curry with a good scoring opportunity for the Finns, and then the Swedes came right back down the ice, and Eklund had an opportunity to put it home for Team Sweden and give them a two-goal lead. However, both goaltenders have come up with big saves. And they have spruced up an otherwise slow and sluggish hockey game to this point. Both goalkeepers playing very, very well. Albalin now for Sweden in across the line. Here's the pass for Naslin. Centering pass in front, and that was tipped by Gustafsson just wide of the corner. With Taco spread out and a little bit out of position. Now Elderbrink at the other end makes a good defensive play as the Finns had a quick two-on-one break. Naslin to Elderbrink. Up along the boards, Rupe takes a hit. Seppo struggles to get it in across the line. And finally, they get a whistle. Well, number three, Tommy Albelin for Sweden won't be able to make those same mistakes when he goes to Quebec this year. He got caught up ice, caused a two-on-one. Meanwhile, Matt's Naslin during the course of this game yet, we have not seen his tremendous bursts of speed and the way that the Finnish defense had been caught flat-footed all night long you would think that Matt Snazlin would just be burning them on the outside making them look like Macy's turnstiles instead he's not doing it and along with him and Gustafsson and a few others they've got to get their legs going out there for Team Sweden. Sundstrom threw it into the corner Sundstrom went after the loose puck put it in behind the net Matty Hagman can't get to it Nielsen, Nielsen takes a shot right on, Taco, and the Swedish player being held in the crease, it was gloved into the net. There will be no goal. Referee Paul Stewart in perfect position to make the call. And the Swedes in desperation tried a fast one when their player was tied up in the crease area. Well, Howie's gotta get back and give Jim Van Horn a few more lessons on goaltending here because exactly the same thing again. Watch Taco, that puck right between his legs. He totally missed it, got a piece of it, but there it is laying in front of the net. Taco outside of his crease, an easy shot. 
What a what an interesting replay there because the puck was gloved by the one Swedish player, but there's no question that the stick knocked it into the net. It wasn't gloved to hit either. What is the rule if you touch it with a glove and even if it goes backwards into your own zone, it's a whistle? Well, I saw the one player whose stick was being held in the crease touch it with a glove, but it certainly didn't look like a pass. Let's have a look at it again if we can. Now watch this. Watch the glove on the puck and watch the stick make contact, put it in. There's no question at all that the stick def uh, directed the puck into the net. And there's not much question either that number 17 for Sweden, Peter Sundstrom, got that glove on the puck. I've got one more piece of news for you. There's no question at all that the goal did not count. <laughs> Ron Finn took that slap shot from Telvin right in the backside. And meanwhile, the puck is cleared out to Samuelson. He has to get some help to get it back down into the finish zone. Siren, 5.35 to go here in the second period. Still a 1-0 hockey game, but the offensive chances have picked up a little bit for both teams here in the last six or seven minutes. Corey, up to Yari Gronstad. Minnesota North Star property, shoots it down the ice off a Swedish player. Rutu tried to chop it in front and Telvin whacked it around on the boards and out. No icing, a rule that could have been played. Virtula works his way down the board. Verda tried to steer it toward the net. Eldebrink has been very steady back there. Took it away from him. Now Curry works out towards the front of the net. And the puck is cleared back out to center. Now the Swedes break it up one more time. Carlson steered it into the zone. And Skriko missed the pass, and the Swedes take over once again. Tommy Albelin clears it into the Swedish or the Finnish zone. Skriko dumps it out to center. Eldebrink shoots it right back in again. And now Newmanen gets it out to Skriko. For Curry. Helmanen loose in front of the net. Curry back out to the line to Newmanen. There's a shot that goes off a Swedish defender. Eklund chopped towards the line and then back into the corner. Sumanen has it. Sumanen running along the boards. Janssen takes his man in there as well. Sumanen still after it. Working against Lars Carlson. They look like they're killing a penalty out there. Neither team taking the body. Instead, they are trying to take the puck. Not much physical effort. Here's Tommy Eklund. Backhand shot. Missed the far side. And the puck is chopped back out to center. Anderson now. Michael Anderson across the line. Tried to set it up for Eklund. And he was tied up. Eklund goes to the boards. Working against Newman and Yarby. Up to Newman and shoots it into the Swedish zone. 305 to play in the second period. Still a one-nothing hockey game. Here comes Michael Telvin, dumps it down the left side. Gustafson is loose. Tried to set it up in the slot. Telvin had to shovel it into the corner. Rupe is after it there, but Gronstan controls for Finland. Up to Newman and he's checked. Gustafson. Gronstan got in his way. Utila. Up to Yari Gronstan. Shoots it in. Telvin broke that up. Telvin along the boards. Gustafson trying to help him. Now Tynan. There's a shot right on. And Lindmark was right there once again. And the puck is flipped off a of player and over the glass. 2.27 to go in period two. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. <clears throat> Which one do you wants to talk about it? Want to talk about it, Gary? Well, remember this play. Taco let the puck go in front of him. Number 17 here 
Peter Sundstrom definitely put his hand on the puck. He was trying to push it forward. That is why the whistle was blown and the goal was disallowed. Sweden could have been ahead two to one. And give referee Paul Stewart credit. He was right behind the net and he had a perfect spot to be to see whether or not the, the play should have counted. It was his judgment and he made it right away that the play did not count and it remains a one nothing hockey game. Nielsen sends it into the corner. Sundstrom couldn't get free to try and make a good pass in front. It comes back to the line. It's kept in by Kent Nielsen. Nielsen now into the corner. Runquist throws it back out to Albala. There's a shot. Score! Tommy Albala. Well, at least the Swedes have been shooting from the point periodically during this game. Now watch in front of the net, though. There are two Swedish players. Nilsson's one of them. They're both tied up. So Taco is able to see the puck fairly clearly. That puck comes back to the point. Number nine, Runquist just throws it after he walked around behind the net, comes back to Alba. He walks in. Now Taco may have been screened by his left winger who came out there and got down in front but he still should have been able to see that puck soon enough. Albalin gets credit for the goal. Nielsen parked just to Taco's left. Sodergren now as play resumes clears it out into the center ice area as the team in it. Shoots it into the Swedish zone. Carlson clears it back out to center. And now Berkquist clears it into the zone. Sodergren is after it there. Lundqvist up to Tikkanen. Sodergren intercepted that pass, just dumped it towards Gary Taco. And now Blumquist gets it out once more to Tikkanen. Backhand shot right into Peter Lindmar. He handles it easily. Lars Carlson. Nearly gave it away to Tikkanen, but they finally get it up to Sodergren at the line and out into the center ice area. Bertquist missed the pass, and this will be an icing call against Sweden. One minute, One minute exactly to play in the second period. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. to center 200 in Sydney. I'm Peter Watts with Gary Green, Howie Meeker, and Jim Van Horn. And there is Tommy Sandlin, the coach of the Swedish team, his club leading this hockey game two to nothing. And he has to be a little bit more pleased with a little bit more effort on the part of his team in the second period. Although it has been a while coming. Under a minute to go in the second period. And the Swedes dump the puck down the ice. Goalkeeper Kerry Taco plays it, so there'll be no icing. Ramo Helmanen just left it there. Gronstan cleared it across to the far side, and now Telvin intercepts for Sweden. Runquist shoots it back into the fin zone. Utila clears it as far as the center ice area. And now, as soon as the Swedes get back on side, Telvin shoots it back into the corner. Albalin from Nielsen and Janssen at 18.04. The official scoring on the second Swedish goal. And the Finns get as far as the Swedish line and the puck's cleared back out to center. Lindmark, delayed offside coming up. And instead, the period comes to an end with the Swedes leading Finland by a score of 2 to nothing. Labatt, Canada Cup. Sverige fick första målet. Det är mycket viktiga sådana i första perioden. I andra perioden fick vi det andra målet. Inte mindre viktigt, Tommy Albin. Nej, det är 1-0. Det är ingen säker ledning. Men nu har vi 2-0 och det känns lite tryggare för oss. 
Jag tyckte från min utsiktplats att pucken passerade mellan benen på den finska målvakten den här gången också. Men du säger att det inte var så. Nej, det var inte så. Den tog på backen som slängde och täckte skott och sen gick den stolpe in. Men vi bjöd finländerna på en hel del målchans i den här perioden. Ja, det har vi gjort lite för mycket. Och vi har mycket att tacka för Pekka att vi fortfarande har 2-0 som vi har nu. Och vi vet ju att han är bra, men hur ska vi spela för att inte bjuda på så många målchanser? Det är en period kvar. Ja, vi får nog gå hem lite nu. Vi har gått bort oss lite mycket i anfallszon. Så ett snabbt pass har ställt två, kanske tre man ibland. Så de har kommit tre mot två och två mot en. Tycker du att finländerna är lika tända som vanligt? Nej, de brukar väl vara ett snabbt väsare tycker jag. Det ser ut som vi skulle kunna gå hem med det här. Jag hoppas det. Tack så Tack ska Tack. action left to play here in Sydney Nova Scotia team Sweden is leading team Finland by a score of two to nothing coming up a little later on this afternoon a very important game for team USA general manager Lou Nanny is with us now I hope that the team your team can get up a little more than what these two teams are up for they're not playing very well at all in the first two periods well I don't know if it's they're not playing very well at all or if it's just their style uh, one thing you notice about the European teams for the most part they don't go to the net very much they pass the puck four times to get 19 feet or something it, it's really amazing that uh, as much puck control as they do have in a game that they don't have very many shots and I think that really takes away from the intensity plus you don't see as much body checking you know that between the two teams so you don't think that they're as intense it's just their style of play and, and because we have more contact in our game that's why our game's a lot more exciting one of the surprises of the tournament so far Lou has been team USA they played extremely well the other on the other hand one of the other surprises has been team Finland because they haven't played very well I think uh, Team Finland's uh, really had a big problem with their forwards. I don't see much intensity going to the net at all. They look good in warm-ups and they pass the puck nice when they got some room and they skate around the perimeter. But the forwards really have not given the defense or the goaltender much problem. They just don't seem to drive for position. They don't seem to go to the net at all and, and cause any havoc for the goaltender. And because of that, uh, it, it just seems that they're just not generating any offense at all. Guys have been ragging me for the last two periods because I compl complimented Kerry Taco on a strong first period. I felt the score could have been much higher after 20 minutes. I thought he played pretty well. He did let in a soft goal in the second period but again he couldn't couldn't be completely 100% faulted for it well the second goal was deflected and so that's not a soft goal anytime the puck changes directions on a guy uh, you, you got to be pretty lucky to get it uh, many times deflected shots the saves that are made on him are just pure luck and he just wasn't lucky in that one but he's played well in that's and Lindmark's played very well in that for Sweden uh, they did get three four chances uh, which is unusual for the Finns and they were only uh, initial shots they never get a secondary shot and Lindmark was able to make the save and that's what really kept the score two nothing every time you take the ice loop, whether it be a game or practice there's always the risk of injury do you worry about injuries more in a, in a tournament like this heading into the regular NHL season than you would say uh, during a regular NHL game you really don't try to think about the injuries the only time you think about it, if you see someone go down and get hurt the first thing you look for is his number is that our guy if it's not then that passes and you say okay <laughs> he's hurt and hopefully not bad you know but but you do concern yourself if anyone is down injured and but other than that it's just like any other game it's just like a, a player driving to the rink is going to have a car accident you, you can't worry about that you have to allow him to play and you know the people who play with a great deal of reckless abandon usually don't get hurt it's the people who play careful that end up with the injuries many times good luck against Czechoslovakia later on today thank you my pleasure Lou Nanny general manager of Team USA will be back with more from Sydney. This is the Labatt Canada Cup 87. They now lead this game over Team Finland by a score of two to nothing. Welcome back to Sydney. I'm Jim Van Horn. Very pleased, I think, to welcome back Howie Meeker with some highlights of that second period. Lou Nanny thought he played pretty well in the first two periods. But uh, we're going to talk about Finland and their, their lack of control of the play throughout the game, actually. Well, yes, it's not often that you uh, see European teams continually give the puck away. Normally, when they get rid of the puck, they give it to someone wearing the same color jersey. The Finns, either they were out last night a little late or they're colorblind. Here, we'll show you right here. Okay, it is the Finns on the attack here. They've got the puck right there. And the player will carry it into this area. Now, watch in front. There's one two and a third Swedish player will come into play 
Sometimes better lucky than good. All he's doing here is praying. Throwing it into the middle. There's not a chance of it going to someone wearing a white jersey. Look at there. There are three players that go through, and then a Swedish player touches it and gives it to the point man. Now, that's a great pass. Right to the point man. He lets the shot go. And the defenseman on the other side, after the puck goes by the short side, comes out the other side, he pinches. Now watch the big guy, does exactly the same thing. Hang tight, hold it right there, hold it right there. Look at, there is nothing but opposition sweaters out in front, and what does he do? He throws it through the crowd, but he gets lucky. He eludes everybody and goes back out to the point. Now stop it right here. Here's the key, both these fellas come in front of the net. The shot will come from the point man, hit them, drop at the uh, finished player's feet and forcing Lindmark to make a heck of a save. There's the shot, it's blocked in front. The finished player turns around, picks it up, is eyeball to eyeball with Lindmark, but that's not good enough. You gotta go upstairs on that turkey. You're not gonna beat him through the five hole, guaranteed. All right, it was a, a better second period for Team Sweden and as far as they were concerned when it came to handling the, the, handling the puck and uh, it paid off in a goal late in the period. Well, yes, it did, but I'll tell you what I was most impressed with is the way they played behind their blue line. It, to me, it was just absolutely unbelievable. And here we're going here. Stop it right here. Okay, this is the start of it. And watch this player here with the discipline. You're told time and time again, when you attack one player behind the blue line, stay with them. You can only do one thing. And watch this. Okay, let it go. Now watch the... Uh, Fins line up behind the blue line. Stop it right there again. Look at there it is. Just keep an eye on that guy. He stays with that player all the time. That's it. Now you're getting it, Gary. Let her go. He's with him again. The Finns back off. Swedes back off. Stop it right here. Look who's got him. He's right there with him. He stayed with him. Now watch the perfect position of the Swedish hockey team. There is no way in the world if the Finns come up with the puck, they're going to do anything constructive. Stop it right there. There's, they, have a man, they have a man in this position here, that man there, one man in here, and everybody's covered. The puck will finally come out to a Finnish player. Look at this. That is just unbelievable. All five men flooding a zone in their own half of the ice surface. It comes up to the... Finnish player right here out of that pack and he'll shoot it in and you know who's going to come up with it right there and away they go. Hey, that is just great discipline when a coach gets a team to play like that behind the blue line. Ha <laughs> ha, he's super. Okay, Howie, thanks very much. We'll take a break and come back with the third period of play from Sydney. It's 2-0 Sweden. This is the Lobat Canada Cup 87. The second period summary from Center 200 in Sydney, brought to you by the good folks at Dodge Trucks. The only goal of the period, scored by Tommy Albelin at 1804. The assist to Kent Nielsen and Thomas Runquist. And the shot totals, 18 to 14 now, favor the Swedes. And two to nothing on the scoreboard. Well now, what kind of performance can we look for? The Swedes uh, content to just play defense and throw the puck out. And the Finns, can they muster any kind of attack, or are they just about ready to surrender? Well, I think, first of all, the Team Sweden has surely got enough left in them that they can come out and play 20 good, solid minutes of hard-working hockey. On the other hand, Team Finland, as you could see, they were just in their final huddle for Canada Cup. I don't know, Peter, whether or not they've got their bags packed already and ready to go home, but I don't think that they're really capable of mustering up too much of an attack 
A lot of the reason because of what Lou Nanny said, their forwards just have no intensity. Skriko, Rutu, and Curry on the forward line to start period three for Team Finland. Gustafsson, Rupe, and Naslin for the Sweden. Taco leaves it behind his own net. Leannon cleared it around on the boards and it comes out to Curry in the center ice area. Naslin knocked down, Curry carries on across the line. Rutu works his way towards the net. Lindmark cleared it away. And now it'll be Rupe bringing it out for Sweden. Magnus Rupe works his way in across the line. Naslin's shot deflected into the corner. Gorey couldn't get it free. Gustafsson behind the net, centers it. It comes back outside the line. <coughs> Heldebrink up to Naslin. He just gets rid of it into the finish zone. Grandstand is after it. Runquist is after him. And the Finns clear it out to center. That pass knocked down by Nielsen. Now it's Lars Carlson dumping it towards the line and Nielsen was ruled offside at the blue line. When you watch Team Sweden in practice as I did yesterday, I mean this is a very entertaining team. They were doing more magic with that puck during their workout than you could possibly imagine. Their passing is absolutely superb. Their skating, their whole skill level is absolutely at the very top end. However, they don't do it in the game I because there's no pressure. However, <laughs> I knew you were coming in there, Howie. I waved my hand. <laughs> well, you and I enjoyed the practice yesterday. Oh, I mean, they were great. Hey, that's just not, that's the thing we should have telecast, the practice. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm working with two guys who like to wave their hands up here. I'm getting out of the way or I'll get a concussion. <laughs> Run quiz keeps it in at the line. Nielsen shoveled it towards the corner. Taco left it behind the net, and Utila has it there. It'd be the first physical play in the game <laughs> if there was anyway, Peter. <laughs> now it's Lars Carlson for Team Sweden. Hagman is up to do some forechecking. Well, so-called forechecking. He was in the zone. And Janssen brings it out to center. Janssen dumps it in. It comes back to the line. Here's a shot right on Taco. And the puck goes up over the glass. And this line, the Labatt player of the game for Sweden will receive the new Canon EOS autofocus. Autofocus that never misses. Stop the game with the only autofocus camera quick enough to capture all the action. The Canon EOS, the official 35 millimeter camera of the 1988 Winter Olympic Games. Here's Carlson going in right on the net, and the puck just slid wide of the open corner, and the Finns clear it out and down the ice. Good chance there by Anders Carlson to go along with the two he had in the first period. But he's 0 for 3 on chances. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. You near either one? No. I did that commercial. I heard the commercial cue, but I didn't have a clue we were going to the rest. This telecast is protected by copyright. Any use of this telecast without permission is prohibited. 17.40 to play in the third period. Sweden 2, Finland nothing. The face-off in the finish zone. And the Finns are finally able to take control of the loose puck. Yarvi works it as far as the line. Sodergren did it a good job to keep it in. Lundqvist now behind his own net. Suminen. Out into the center ice area. Now Suminen will try and cross the line, and instead Sodergren got back to break that play up. Anders Carlson works into the slot area. Siren knocked him down. The puck cleared into the corner. Sodergren is after it there. And it comes out to Carlson. He got it back to the line, and the Swedes are not able to keep it in as Elderbrink had just come off the bench. 
Oh, Peter, I was starting to say that the line of Bergfist, Carlson, and Sodergren in front of Peter Lindmark has probably been the best checking line that the Swedes have had in today's game. Lindmark has played well enough. Well, you can't knock him too much. He has not had a goal scored against him as of yet. And he hasn't had an awful lot of help in front of him. However, that line that was just on the ice, Bergvist, Carlson, and Sodergren, do create more action out there just through their intensity, their hard working, than any other line the Swedes have had so far. Oyan and cleared it into the zone. Seppo tried to shovel it towards the slot area. Tommy Eklund has it there. Got rid of it down the boards. That broke it up. And the spins nearly had a great scoring opportunity in alone. Now Albalin. Starts out of his own zone. He'll be at the uh, Nordiques camp later on this month. Just signed by the Quebec Nordiques hockey team. Seppo cleared it over on the boards. Grandstand's got it there. Diverta up to Seppo. Dropped it to Kylanen. In behind the net. Seppo's after the loose puck. Orders are close along the board. Seppo shovels it loose. Takes the hit along the boards. Olanen fights his way out of the corner. Nobody at the line. Now he gets the pass out, and that shot by Kylanen was wide. Here's another shot by Gronston that missed the net. And the Swedes are able to chop it over the glass and take a whistle. Fifteen forty to go in the third period. And we're back to the kind of pattern of play that we saw in the first period and a half. Mikola Anderson did not play in the second game. However, in three games, he has ended up being a leading scorer for Team Sweden here. Anderson was a late addition to this whole Team Sweden. I'll tell you something, too. He's got a goal and three assists, and he's plus five. The only guy in the team that's working. Plus five. How about that? All the superstars are minus. He looks pretty good out there, too. I mean, he does try to break through that blue line and shows some intensity, something that we haven't seen a great deal of in this game. Curry struggles behind the net with Thomas Janssen, and the puck is cleared out into the center ice area. Utila up to route two. Curry across the line. Dumped it into the slot area. Skriko couldn't get loose. And they get it out into the center ice area. Now it's Magnus Rupe. In across the line, did a good job using his body as a screen. Gustafsson can't get free, and now it's Janssen who has to go back to get the loose puck. Thomas Janssen, New York Islander veteran defenseman. Longtime member of the Swedish national team, shoots it down the ice, and Utila has it there. Up to Yari Kuri. Back for Newman. Up into the center ice area, Route 2 nearly got free. Good job to take him out of the play there by Michael Telvin. And Telvin goes after the loose puck, shovels it along the boards, and Runquist now gets out into the center ice area. Runquist across the line, all his help went to the bench, so Runquist circles back, flips it for Nielsen, and the Finns take over. Newman and up to uh, Bloomquist. He gets as far as the line, and Telvin shoots it right back out again. Bloomquist to Miko Makala. He's rubbed in along the boards there by uh, Samuelson. Sundstrom couldn't get loose, and the puck is shot back into the Swedish zone. Lindmark along the boards. Deacon and broke that play up, and the puck goes up over the glass once again. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. You're looking at the Labatt Canada Cup standings if this present 2 to nothing lead for Sweden holds up. Sweden would move up to into a second place tie with the Soviets who play later today against Canada. 
And the Finns would remain winless in five starts in the competition. That's what the standings will look like if this 2-0 lead holds up. 13.45 to play in the third period. And the Swedes chop the puck into the finish zone. Taco behind his net, clears it around on the glass. Carlson up to do some forechecking. The Finns are able to dig it free, and Utila takes it behind his own net. Up to Grandstand, into the center ice area, and the Finns break it up once again. Oyanen clears it in across the line. Carlson effectively doing some back checking. Here's the shot toward the side of the net. Here's a chance right in front at Lindmark. Didn't give the shooter much room to work on. And the Finns regroup at center. Now it's Albalin. Tried to throw it up into the middle where Sonnegren was breaking free. Now here's a chance for the Finns. And another chance. And Lindmar made the first save. And then flared the high-flying puck. And held on for a face-off. Balance. Great balance on skates. Well, all Lindmark had to do in that second one was just play a little baseball here. Watch as number 14, Seppo, winds up with a shot. Big rebound that came out, though. That was picked up by number 22, Oyanen, but there was a rolling puck. He really drifted that one up into the high area of the net. Lindmark just coming across on his backhand and pulling that puck out of the air. Well, the key there was he just didn't guess. He attacked the shooter and let the shooter stick make contact with the puck and then moved that left leg to make the save. He had to go down on one knee, bounce right back up, and was able to play goal. I just think great move, great save, great balance. Well, you mentioned the key word, Howie. You were talking about balance, and it was a good piece of work there by Peter Lindmark. And now Michael Anderson, about whom we were speaking moments ago, shoots the puck in towards the side of the net. It comes back out to the line, and the Finns are able to break out. Good play there by Carlson to break up that finish thrust. Anderson. Having trouble finding a play to make, threw it up along the boards, and he managed to get the puck out into the center ice area. Siren shoots it right back in again. Lindmark shoots it right at Curry, and Curry comes around behind the net, dumped it in front, and there was Lars Pedersen to take it away from a Finnish attacker, Christian Rutu. Now it's Eklund clearing it into the zone. Play really scrambly here in the last few minutes. Nobody really able to get anything going in a sustained kind of way, and right now there's a pile up in front of the Finnish bench, and there's no further play. Well, we had not talked about what a disappointment Yari Curry has been. This is the type of a tournament when you would expect a Yari Curry to get away from his shadow Wayne Gretzky and really show what type of a hockey player he is. We talked earlier about how many goals and assists he'd scored this past year in the NHL, but I think he's really obviously missing Wayne Gretzky. He doesn't have even close to a Wayne Gretzky playing center ice for him, and he, on the other hand, hasn't shown a great deal of intensity. We've used that word a lot through the game, but boy, oh boy, all you've got to do out there is show a little bit of hustle in life. Curry hasn't really shown any. Calvin takes Deacon and in on the boards. The Swedes clear it around to the line, but not out. Blomquist fakes the shot. And now Blomquist takes a shot towards the net. Lindmark came out and chopped it out into the center ice area. Rupe is after it. And finally, Teppo Newmanen throws it over to Blomquist. Out to center, Gustafsson shoots it inside the line. Naslin can't get to it. Michael Telvin. Now Tikkanen, Rupe poked it inside the line, two on one break, Rupe right in, Rupe trying to trick it in, they score! Off Tikkanen, I believe, but Rupe with some nice moves will get credit for the goal. Well, that's almost a replay of what Howie and I saw in practice yesterday. These guys, when they're on an offensive opportunity, as Rupe was right here, they can really do a lot with the puck. Rupe just held on to it, he held on to it, Taco came out, he finally committed himself, and then, very neatly, Rupe just tucked that puck in behind him. Watch it now from Taco's angle. Taco didn't make a move until the very last minute when he stuck that left pad out, but still there was enough room and enough reach for Rupe 
to get a hold of that puck and just tuck it in behind that goal line. Well, Taco was mentally asleep on it as well. When Rupe went to his left over the goal line, he had to use his stick as a poke check, and he didn't. He stuck out his foot instead. Got to use the stick. Oh, yeah, and in across the line. It's dumped out. Now here's a breakaway for Team Sweden. Kent Nielsen right in on Taco. Lost control of the puck. <laughs> and it comes back out to the line. Albalan throws it in. Nielsen with another chance. Scores! No, they ruled no goal. He must have hit the crossbar. It comes back out to the line, Seppo. In across the line now. Oyanin chopped it to the corner. Seppo can't get to it. Heilinen to Seppo. And now it is taken by Team Sweden and shoveled out to the line and into the center ice area. Anders Eldebrink, 10 minutes to go in period three. Three to nothing in favor of Sweden. Anders Carlson. And the Swedes starting to throw the puck around in their own zone a little bit carelessly now. Here's a chance for Ruti Oh, well, Peter, you had just finished saying how careless Team Sweden were in their own end zone defensively. No sooner had you said that than what a boo-boo here. Carlson just overskated the puck. Rutu ends up with it, and he just puts it neatly right behind Lindmark Low. But some real confusion there between Carlson and Janssen. No communication whatsoever. No one took the puck. Carlson ended up overskating it, and Rutu, he just said, look what I've got here, a puck, and no one to come at me. So Christian Rutu with the unassisted goal at 10-17. And it's a three to one hockey game now in favor of Team Sweden. Again, the situation so far as the tournament is concerned, Sweden has to win to make it into the medal round. The Finns, no matter what the score of this game, are playing their last game of this tournament. Gronlund throws it up into the center ice area. Talbot sets it up. Rupe brings it into the zone. And Hanu Verta goes behind his own net. Rupe up to do some forechecking. Rupe shovels it into the open side. Goes after it. Has two players battling to keep him away from the puck. And now Curry starts back. Missed a body check. Was checked. And now the Finns get control again. Here is Skriko. Skriko's shot off a defender. Here's a puck chop towards the open side. Skriko controls again. Something's happened. They've decided to play hockey in the last 10 minutes of the hockey game. Rupe shovels it out over his own line. And Blomquist retreats to his own zone. Now it'll be Yari Kuri for Finland. Newmanen to Blomquist. Long pass up through the center ice area, broken up and chopped back into the finish zone. Blomquist tries again. Tikkanen let it go down the, the boards. It's chopped around now, and here comes Runquist. And he cleared it promptly into the finish bench to stop sustained play. 8.20 to go in period three. This is the Labatt Canada Cup. Finland won, 8.20 to play in the third period from Center 200 in Sydney, Nova Scotia. We hope you're enjoying this Canada Cup preliminary round hockey game. Sweden trying to advance to the medal round with a victory. Finland trying to finish out this tournament on a positive note. And there have been precious few positive notes in this tournament for the Finns, who brought a lot of talent here, but who haven't been able to make the most of it. Now the Finns chop it out to center ice. Suminen works his way in across the line. They have to regroup at center on a delayed offside. Newmanen 
Back to Bloomquist. Quarters are close behind the net. It's chopped around on the boards and out into the center ice area. And Lars Carlson throws it across ice to Janssen. Nielsen. Boy, he's really skated pretty well for a guy who supposedly had a bad leg. Janssen chopped it in behind the net. But he's handled the puck like a plumber. That's not his trademark. <laughs> no, he didn't look great on that breakaway that he had. I knew if I set you up enough, you'd disagree with me once. Well, the magic man and the magic hands weren't really there. Kent Nielsen had two good at scoring opportunities in all alone back a few shifts ago. Didn't connect on either of them. Seppo now breaks in on the right side. Lindmark came out, took the loose puck away, and cleared it to a teammate, Michael Talvin, and he just gets rid of it down the ice. Here's Sodergren after it in the corner. He's working against Viren and clear, or Siren rather, and cleared it around on the right side. And Talvin now takes over in the neutral zone. He shoots it right back in. That's a delayed offside. But they will let the Finns try and bring it out. Seppo. Cleared it down to Lindmark. Dalvin taken out of the play. Samuelson goes after it. Gave it away. Now here's Seppo behind the net. Yuri Seppo tried to center it. Seppo keeps control. Sets it up now for Vera. Here's the shot right on. And it just missed. And it's cleared around on the boards. And we'll have a penalty called for roughing against Team Sweden. Well, this could give Finland an excellent opportunity to get right back in this hockey game. Michael Telvin, the culprit, watch in front of Lindmark. Just to his right, you will see Telvin moving across, and then he comes across with that cross check, and then he ends up holding the Finnish player as well. So not much question that Telvin was going to end up in the penalty box over that one. How dumb can you be cross-checking a guy who's standing in front of you high on the shoulders? All you got to do is dig him in the kidneys and uh, you don't knock him down. And you don't get a penalty. And use but, your head. Oh, especially in a 3-1 hockey game with six minutes to go and Sweden desperately needing the win here. Not a very disciplined penalty that Telvin took at all. If we just started it in the first five minutes of the first period, we might have had some fun here this afternoon. Naslin shovels it towards the line. Naslin. Working hard along the board, Ben Gustafson comes over to help out, and they combine to shovel it out into the neutral zone. Talvin for roughing at 13.20. And so the Finns now with perhaps a last gasp opportunity to make the final six minutes interesting. Here's Newman and keeping it in the zone. Tiari Curry. Around on the boards for Rutu. Hagman running along the boards. It's back into the slot. Here's a chance. And a good sliding defensive play there by Ben Gustafson. He gets it out into the center ice area. Naslin works away. And then promptly chops it back down to his own line as he took a hit from Rutu. Well, as you'll recall, Team Sweden has had some of their better scoring opportunities when they've been killing a penalty in today's game. Maybe the referees to blame. We should have had more penalties. Delay a game. Curry. <laughs> Curry over on this near side to Oyanen. You till it out of Curry. Tikkanen, who has been almost invisible in this hockey game, clears it in across the line. Curry can't get free, and it comes back out to Utila at center. Finn slow to get out of the zone. Runquist able to just clear it back to his own line to Carlson. And now Thomas Janssen clears it out and down the ice. 25 seconds left in the penalty to Michael Talvin of Sweden. 3-1 is the score in the hockey game for Sweden. 4.35 to go in the third period. Oyadin across the line. And Albalin broke that up and shoots it right back out again. Tikkanen. Doubles it up along the boards to Kilonen. Lindmark just kind of dodged it towards the corner. Now here's a chance, and that shot was wide, and Naslin's got the puck and shoots it out of the zone. Sodergren. Gustafsson. Now it's chopped in to Lindmark. And it comes up to Sodergren. 
Hawkins Sodergren shoots it down into the behind the net. Corey. Long pass up for Streako. Streaks in on the side. Lindmark got there first. Corey will try his luck. Took the shot towards the net. Blocked by the defense and chopped back out to center. And the teams are back at full strength. And we've got three and a half minutes to go in the hockey game. Siren run over there by Gustafson. For Bergqvist, rather. Now Route 2 tries to dig it free along the boards and does. And it's chopped back down into the finish zone once again. Curry could not get to the long pass. Shot down the ice. Lindmark clears it right back out again. Now it is Carlson. Lars Carlson checked in the neutral ice area. Here's Yari Curry. Up this time for Hellenen. Hellmanen is checked. And it's shot back out and down the ice. Well, if the Swedes get out of this game with a win, one thing Tommy Sandlin will be appreciative of is that they haven't even used up a half a tank of gas, and yet they're going to end up with a win most likely here, so they'll be fresh going into the semifinals anyway. Two minutes and 44 seconds to go in the third period. Sweden three, and Team Finland one. The Finns have had some difficulties pulling their team together in Canada Cup. They've complained a lot. They've complained about their travel schedule, about a lot of the little things, and I think that has meant a great deal in the Finns' win-loss column as well. They have not played as a team. They have not shown any competition, and they said that they haven't had any fun really over here. Well, we all know winning is fun, and they haven't been doing any of that. However, I think that they are a little bit of the spread apart team out there. They don't play as a unit. Utila cleared it back into his own zone. Takes the return pass up on the boards now to Miko Makala. Munyan and or Suman and rather couldn't control it. Now Gronstan clears it towards the corner. Samuelson's after it. Makala moves up, takes a hit. Five players along the boards, and finally it comes out it to the line. And Michael Talbot, weak pass looking for Nielsen, who was breaking through the middle. Nielsen nearly got a loose puck once again. Now it's Makala. Albalin tries to make the check. Michael Talbot comes across, gets the loose puck, and starts back out of his own zone. A minute and 45 seconds to play in the third period. Utila. This throw the back into his own zone. Kamenin is checked. Gustafson throws it in front. And a good scoring opportunity there for Rupe. And the puck kind of bounced on him as he went to shoot it. Now Team Finland manages to get across the line. Skriko is checked. Has to go back into his own zone. There's another giveaway. This time to Naslin. And he just gets rid of it into the corner. A minute and 15 seconds to play in the third period. Naslin. Bodied along the boards, the Finns take control. Utila just shoots it out and down the ice off a Finnish defender, so no icing. It comes to the line, and they try and keep it in, and Berta did that right in front of Ron Finn, and there was no chance he'd get away with it. Well, all the Swedes have to worry about right now is making sure defensively, how he had talked about their abilities behind the blue line, they've got to make sure coverage-wise, they've got their man, And Lindmark right now is halfway out to the blue line, probably looking for a drink of water. Finland have called a timeout. They are going to attempt, obviously, to get Taco out of the net with a minute to go. They know if they are going to at least try to gain a tie, they're going to have to score a goal early in order to have another chance at another one. So here are the Labatt Canada Cup standings once again, and we have uh, arbitrarily awarded Sweden two points for this victory with a minute to go in the hockey game. And the Swedes now uh, uh, cannot finish second. The Soviets, I think, uh, will, will finish in second spot, but those two teams will play uh, in all likelihood in the next round, although we'll have to wait and see what the U.S. and the Czechs do, of course, in a later game here from Sydney. 
Well, gentlemen, I think both these clubs this afternoon, and maybe during the whole tournament, we're looking for some leadership. Uh, Naslin has to do something, Nielsen has to do something, and Kelvin, I think, have to really work up a sweat in order for the Swedes to get going. And on the other hand, Curry uh, hasn't worked up a sweat. Strico has done absolutely nothing, and McAuliffe, too. And when the other guys, the bit players, see these fellas uh, not giving out 100%, not doing anything constructive on offense or defense, uh, they're liable to slow down a little bit, too. I'll say this for the Swedes, Howie. I think they've been one of the more impressive teams in the tournament for, uh, that has come over from Europe. I, and now, that's not saying much, to, given the way the Czechs have played and the Finns have played. But uh, Taco is out of the net, by the way, for Team Finland. So they have six attackers on the ice now with 30 seconds to go. But I do think the Swedes have played pretty well in a couple of games that they have lost. And now they haven't played quite as well, and it appears they're going to come away with a victory. So we'll see if they are made of better stuff when they get to the medal round, as it appears they are going to now. As the second stick on the clock, there's Lindmark once again. He's been first class, taking that shot away from Yari Curry. And now the Swedes just shovel it out into the center ice area. And the second stick down, Essa Tikkanen. Nearly gave it away to Naslin. Here's Curry setting it up in the slot. And Rutu with the last shot of the hockey game, and it doesn't get through. And Sweden moves on to the medal round of the 1987 Canada Cup by virtue of a 3-1 victory over Team Finland. Well, Peter Lindmark played a pretty good game for Sweden. All things aside, that last save that he made point blank on Yari Curry showed Lindmark's speed, his abilities to stand up, and his abilities to anticipate as well. He's got great maneuverability on skates, and he's very, very smart. And although we didn't get a chance this afternoon to see him use his stick, I think he's as good a uh, goaltender as I've seen in a long time with the stick. Certainly, I would think in this afternoon's game, uh, Lindmark was head and shoulders better than Taco, and I am a great Taco supporter. I think somewhere along the line, he's going to be a great goaltender. Got all the tools to be a, a super one in the National Hockey League. Doesn't it surprise you, Howie, that Lindmark hasn't been given a chance in the NHL? Well, it certainly does, because uh, some of these uh, National League clubs are taking 18, 19, 20-year-old kids, trying to make them goaltenders uh, five years before they're ready. There's a guy who could come along and apparently do just one heck of a job for you. And he doesn't beat himself. That's the key to playing goal. Do not beat yourself. Make the guy with the puck beat you. I like him. Can I say something here? <laughs> the mic is open, sir. <laughs> he earned it with his feet. and Kerry Taco, respectively, are the players of the game. This is the Labatt, head of the cup, 87. Good Finnish players on teams where they don't have to be leaders. I don't know that there is a Finnish player in the NHL today that you could really call a leader in its team. Okay. Yeah, they may be good followers, but they uh, they don't lead very well. Lots of times during the season, Curry gives you that impression, though, that he, he does enough.
downtown goal in the third period for Team Sweden 3, for a game total of 21, Team Finland 9, for a game total of 23. Here's your final score of this afternoon's hockey game. Team Sweden over Team Finland. 3-1 to one, the final count from Center 200 here in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Sweden now advances to the next round playoffs. They don't know who they'll be playing yet, either uh, the uh, Soviet Union or Team Canada as far as Finland is concerned. Major disappointment for this tournament going through without a single victory, a single point, a single tie. They go home empty-handed. Now let's go upstairs to the three good guys. All right, Jimmy, thank you very much. Howie, we were talking during the commercial break about leadership. The Finns did not appear to have it in this tournament, and I suggested that one of the things about the Finns is that even though they have some good individual players, even those who play in the NHL don't necessarily have to be the leaders on their teams because other players on the NHL clubs perform that role. Agree? Yes, I certainly do agree, although during the year I see uh, Yerry Curry do a Tremendous amount of things, both offensively and defensively, and back in the zone zone. And a lot of games in Edmonton and on the road as well, I've seen him be a leader. But uh, on that club that he plays with, there are five or six others. All right, Gary, we've seen three games. We, you and I have done three games involving Team Sweden. I would think this one would perhaps be their least impressive performance. We know they're capable of playing better because they've showed it. What are they going to have to do better in the medal round than they did in this uh, game if they are to get to the final. Well, I think it's pretty simple. Play like they did last Saturday night against the Soviets, and that's all they've got to do. Last Saturday night, and we don't want to keep harping back on how they played then, but they were aggressive. They were the most aggressive Swedish team that I've ever seen. They all were taking the body. They were moving the puck as they're capable of, and they had everything from great goaltending on Lindbark's part right straight out. However, then, they disappeared in the next game. They came alive, obviously, against the Czechs. They've been a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde hockey team. All right, I see Bob Johnson is standing by with Jim Van Horn downstairs, and I know the coach has some other things to do. Let's get down to Jim Van Horn with the USK coach. Jim? Thank you very much, Peter. Bob, first of all, your thoughts on Sweden's victory this afternoon. Well, we're uh, obviously disappointed. You know, we were pulling for Finland, and Finland would have won the game we're in, and uh, it would have been nice for us because I could have played a couple of players that certainly deserved a play that hadn't played so far in the tournament. You're in a situation now you need a tie to get into the playoff round. Well, I think uh, it goes down there. You know exactly what you have to do. You have to win or tie the game tonight, and the Czechs have to get a victory. So I think I'll make for a very exciting hockey game. What strategy do you have to employ going in against the Czechs? A very strong, very well, very good skating team. Well, uh, uh, if we found out if we can get ahead of the Czechs, uh, we'll get more opportunities if we're ahead than if we're behind. Uh, all these teams are very good defensively, very good defensively. And it seems the first goal or two are so important. And it usually uh, the team that scores the first goal wins at the, the game. Their goaltender has been very, very good. Dominic Hasek has played outstandingly well throughout the tournament. Well, so has Johnny Van Briesbach, who will be on the net for the U.S. team tonight. So uh, you'll see two of the finer goalies in the game tonight. Your team, as far as talent goes, is, is not up to snuff it as far as the Soviets or the Canadians are, concer are concerned, but they've been very, very well coached. You've had them very, very well prepared going in against your, your opponents. Oh, well, we've had a good tournament, you know. Uh, uh, I think we proved we were very, very competitive. We beat Finland and played very good defensively. We, we beat a very good Swedish team. Uh, we played very well against the Canadian team and felt we should have got at least a point in that game. And the Russians just were outstanding against us, I thought. Uh, it's the best team we've seen in the tournament so far. The night, night the Russians beat us. Uh, and now they tell me the checks, and I watched the tapes this afternoon, and uh, they look like the other teams. Uh, they, they, they got a little bit of Russian, a little bit of Canadian, <laughs> a little bit of Swedish and Finn in them. So uh, it's been a great tournament, and we want to be in the semifinals because now you're playing sudden death, death uh, hockey, and then if we can, you know, play Canada in the first round, you know, we, we know exactly where we're playing. But when you get down to sudden death, 
Beth Hockey could certainly be a, have a chance to win, and we want to be in Montreal on Wednesday night. Okay, thanks very much, Bob. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you. Game's coming up. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. That's the story from Sydney, Nova Scotia, Team Sweden over Team Finland. Final score here, 3-1. Back shortly.